Hello and welcome to Random Hunts Volume 2. Today we have some pretty interesting stuff lined up. For those of you who don't know, this series of videos features footage from various hunting trips in which I didn't quite gather enough material for a full episode. This is going to be an interesting one. Uh, we've got three different locations, three different air guns, and a number of different species. We're going to get things started today at my family's farm on a beautiful sunny day targeting ducks. Let's see how this one plays out. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Got some, some rather cool stuff planned for today. So let's just run through you know, where we are and what we're going to be doing today. Um, so I'm, I'm walking through a bit of a forest at the moment. I've parked my car a few hundred meters back and we're going to be going after some ducks today. So I'm heading towards that dam right over there guarded by a rather hectic looking bull but we'll have to have to wait for the bull to move out the way so we've got the dam there and this property just happens to be owned by uh, members of my family um, my grand grandfather owns this farm farms next door owned by various uncles and stuff um, farm cattle over here as you can see and also keep a whole lot of beehives beehives all over the place you can hear you can hear constant buzzing all the time which is rather scary and ominous <laughs> my grandfather's farm is all the way back there behind those trees and if we go the other way past all those hundreds of beehives there we have a huge field and on the other side of that field is my uncle's farm so we've got a big property to hunt here. Um, we don't often, don't often come out here because there's not that much to hunt. But on this one particular dam, I've seen quite a lot of ducks. So once we can get all the cows to move out the way, I'll be heading down there. We'll be setting up and we'll see if we can get some, some ducks. Now, there are usually a fair number of waterfowl in this area. So I have my hopes up for today and the weather is almost perfect aside from a little bit of wind. I take some time to get the impact set up and then make my way down towards the dam. Right, so I'm setting up here uh, right on the, the edge of the dam. What I've done is I've taken note of, of exactly which way the wind is blowing um, and I've, I've positioned myself so that the wind is blowing directly into my face. Um, so we're going to set up right here on the, on the edge. I've got a good view of the dam wall and the dam wall is generally the spot where if the ducks do come in they tend to land along the edge of the dam wall. They seem to like the, the reeds that are growing along there. Those of you who have seen my videos before will know I'm not really a, a camouflage type of guy. Um, I generally just walk around in flip flops and shorts and a t-shirt and, and hope everything works out. But we are, are dealing with birds today that are very very clever. So we're going to have to use all the help we can get. I won't use the gloves today because it's going to get very hot. I've got this headpiece. And I've got this which I'll probably just drape over myself and over the rifle to keep us concealed. It takes some time, but after about an hour of waiting, a flock of ducks decides to land on the edge of the water and it's exactly the chance I was looking for. It's quite a long shot, just over 100 meters, but I make the rookie mistake of ranging the dam wall above him instead of next to him, forgetting that there's quite a gradual slope and when I take my shot the pellet passes just above his head. Thanks to the quietness of the rifle however, the ducks only move a few meters to the right and give me a second chance. I'm going for a headshot on this duck and it is so close, but again it's just over his head. Disappointing, but that's how hunting goes and I'm able to see the positive side of things. Even though we haven't had a successful morning, 
Um, it's always good to just be, be out here on the farm, out in nature. Uh, just hear the, the ripple of the water as the, the fish jump out and make little splashes. Um, hear the call of the fish eagle. There's nothing like it. So, you know, although we haven't got anything, still got a smile on my face. So let me just show you my, my setup today because it is very cool. Um, obviously, I've got the, the FX Impact that you know already. Um, absolutely love this gun. Never shot a duck with it before, so hopefully we can get that done today. Um, it's a very accurate, very powerful, but very quiet gun. Um, that's partly got to do with the way that the, the valve and hammer works and how it saves air. But also, this, this whole shroud system is, is very effective. Um, I've got the silencer shroud on this gun today instead of the telescopic shroud. Simple reason, we're not walking through dense bush. We don't need a short, compact gun today. We need a quiet gun, and the shroud gives me that um, so when I lie here there's a good chance that if I do miss or even if I do hit a, a duck there will be others around and you want them to stay there and if the gun is quiet and we're shooting at about 70 meters here those birds won't hear the gun and they will stay put and there's a good chance we'll, we'll be able to get a second shot on them um, so that's great got the Hawk Frontier scope and this quite simply is the best scope that I own at the moment very good glass. It is very expensive, but I was willing to pay the extra um, just to, you know, get that extra extra quality. And hopefully, you'll see that when I film through the scope. Talking about filming through the scope, got the Eagle Vision camera mount and the Casio high speed camera. This should allow you to see the shots that I'm taking uh, through the scope through a very cool perspective. You should be able to see that pellet travel, and you'll see it in high speed. So that'll be great. Oh, and then lastly. Atlas bipod. This is nice for shooting prone. Um, you know, just open it out. You can extend the legs to wherever you want them. Um, yeah, gives me a nice, steady shooting platform. And you do need that when you when you want to get good shot placement, about 70 meters. You need to be steady. Good. So we've got the good setup, which means that I have no excuses if I if I take bad shots today. Um, so hopefully we can get it done. Cool. So after that little chat, I decided to knuckle down for round two and prepare for a facepalm moment. I forget to press record on the scope cam for this next shot. I know, it sucks. And that's why I couldn't make this a full episode on its own. It's a perfect kill shot, but unfortunately no footage, so let's bring this one to a close. I'm a very happy man right now, and I'll tell you why. It's not just the fact that I managed to shoot this duck. That's great but it's the, the distance that I managed to shoot it at. This was at 104 meters, which is really a long way off. And I want to actually talk a bit about this duck because it's one of the most beautiful species I've ever had the pleasure of hunting. So this is a, a yellow bull duck. Uh, it's called that obviously because it's got a yellow bull. <laughs> but the reason why this is, is so beautiful is the, the coloration on its wings. If you look at this wing here, it's got like a it looks green on the camera, but to me it looks blue. Very interesting because depending on what, what light you hold it in or, or what angle you hold it at, it goes either blue or green. Don't know if you can see that there. But one of the most um, beautiful species to hunt in South Africa with an air gun, and I'd say one of the tastiest as well. I'm gonna take this home, I'm gonna cook it up, and I'm gonna have a, a great dinner tonight. But let's not call it a day, let's head back out again, see if we can get some more, and this time, I'll remember the camera. <laughs> Let's get to it. I didn't get any more ducks afterwards, but the one I did get went straight onto the pan when I got home, and it was freaking delicious. The meat was really tender and full of flavor, and it really whet my appetite for some more hunting. The following footage was captured back in September 2015, out on a dairy farm on an extremely windy day. I headed out with Luke and the plan was to shoot some rock pigeons, but the wind was really messing us around, so we needed to be smart. We started off by shooting birds in and around the milking sheds and then setting them up as decoys to bring the other birds within range. Our tactics worked out pretty well. Luke and I were switching roles the entire time, one with the BSA and one with the camera. And this was a memorable trip for me because it was the start of a very long shooting friendship with Luke. We've been on many hunts together and learned a lot from each other since this outing. Headshot. Sweet. 
Okay, I'm on. Half to one mulder. And here's my personal favorite shot of the day. Switched them off immediately, and I would definitely recommend the BSA Scorpion to anyone looking for their first PCP A gun. Beautiful. Yep. And to finish this one off, here are two clips from a more recent hunting trip with the FX Real. The first shot is at a dove that drops her right on the spot, and the second shot is at an invasive house sparrow. A well placed shot to the head and he did not feel a thing. And that brings another random hunts compilation to an end. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.